In November of 1917, the British government did something which was incredibly strange and mysterious. A Briton, which is now the prince of the secular world, The secular world takes religion out of politics. And Britain is the prince of the secular world. Britain issues a declaration known as the Balfour Declaration. In November 1917, that it is the intention of His Majesty's government to work for the establishment of a Jewish national home in the Holy Land. The Israeli government recently announced that the largest community of Jewish people in the world is in the nation of Israel. Last week, Immigration Minister Sofa Lanver reported to the Nesset's Committee for Immigration, Absorption, and Diaspora Affairs that the nation of Israel has taken America's place as home to the world's largest Jewish population. The Jewish population in Israel at the state's inception back in 1948 was approximately 600,000, less than 6% of the global Jewish population. Now, this grew over the next 10 years to 1.8%. 8 million. By 1980, there were approximately 3.2 million Jewish people living in the nation of Israel, rising to 5.8 million by 2010. However, Landver reported that there are now 6.6 .6 million Jews in the nation of Israel. <laughs> And gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered, and I will sanctify in you before the heathen. Ye shall know that I am the Lord when I shall bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for which I lifted up mine hand to give it to your fathers. Now understand that this condition of a majority of Jews in the nation of Israel was anticipated in Bible prophecy as a final return of the Jewish people to the nation of Israel. It's referred to as the third inheritance of the land, the first being by Joshua, the second after the Babylonian exile. Now, the third inheritance refers to Jews prophesied return from the exile that followed the destruction of the second temple by the Romans in 70 AD. Jewish tradition holds that this return will usher in the building of the third temple, the return of the Davidic dynasty, and the Messianic era. Israel has been recently rocked with swarms of earthquakes. More earthquakes that shook up Israel's northern region just as recent as Sunday. Many experts believe that a coming mega quake will take place in the nation of Israel. Is that the reason all of these other quakes have been coming in? There have been reports of a series of earthquakes in Israel that really have stirred remembrance of an 80-year-old prophecy preluding to the war of Gog of Magog as prophesied in the book of Ezekiel chapter 38. Rabbi Shivli stated that these earthquakes would be so severe that they would cause geographic changes in the Temple Mount, requiring the construction of an entirely new city. The earthquakes will cause springs of water to burst forth around Jerusalem, bringing about the prophecy in Zechariah. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, and half of them toward the hinder sea, in summer and in winter shall it be, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Well, the Bible also says that there will be a major earthquake that will split the Mount of Olives in two. Just to give you a brief timeline of all that's been taking place and will take place, we understand that the Trump administration is working on a very aggressive peace initiative for the nation of Israel and the Palestinian Authority. 
We also understand that there are earthquakes that have been hitting the nation of Israel in recent days. We also understand that we have a large amount of Jewish people that have returned to the nation of Israel, fulfilling one of the greatest Bible prophecy mandates so far. And then we have the longest lunar eclipse of the century that is set to begin on July 27th, 2018. Probably the longest all of humanity will ever see. But this will only be visible in the Middle East. All of this happening on the 70th year of the nation of Israel statehood. Let's take a closer look at what took place, the type of events that took place on the 9th of Av. The Bible says when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. Thank you all. And of course, I want to especially welcome Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. Your presence here today is a, a testament to the importance of this occasion not only for the Trump administration, but in a very personal way for you. For you, each of you, for the pursuit of peace, and for President Trump himself. Thank you. <laughs> Dear friends, what a glorious day. Remember this moment. This is history. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the Most Holy. Know therefore, and understand, that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince, shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. President Trump, by recognizing history, you have made history. So for me, this spot brings back personal memories. But for our people, it evokes profound collective memories of the greatest moments we have known on this city on a hill. In Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, Abram passed the greatest test of faith, and the right to be the father of our nation. In Jerusalem, King David established our capital 3,000 years ago. In Jerusalem, King Solomon built our temple, built our temple, built our temple, which stood for many centuries. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. In Jerusalem, Jewish exiles from Babylon rebuilt the temple, rebuilt the temple, rebuilt the temple, which stood for many more centuries. In Jerusalem, the Maccabees rededicated that temple, rededicated that temple, and restored Jewish sovereignty in this land. And it was here in Jerusalem some 2,000 years later, that the soldiers of Israel spoke three immortal words, Hal Habayt Be'adenu, the Temple Mount is in our hands. The Temple Mount is in our hands, is in our hands. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, 
he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Mr. Prime Minister, Mrs. Netanyahu, it's a great honor to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, Donald, Melania, Sarah and I want to thank you for your extraordinary friendship and hospitality. It's always a pleasure to see you both, but this is the first time we meet in Washington, America's capital, after you declared, Mr. President, Jerusalem as Israel's capital. And this was a historic proclamation, followed by your bold decision to move the embassy by our upcoming uh, uh, National Independence Day. I want to tell you that the Jewish people have a long memory. So we remember the proclamation of the great king, Cyrus the Great, Persian king, 2,500 years ago. He proclaimed that the Jewish exiles in Babylon can come back and rebuild our temple in Jerusalem. We remember 100 years ago, Lord Balfour, who uh, issued the Balfour Proclamation that recognized the rights of the Jewish people in our ancestral homeland. We remember 70 years ago, President Harry S. Truman who was the first leader to recognize the Jewish state. And we remember how a few weeks ago, President Donald J. Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Mr. President, this will be remembered by our people throughout the ages. And as you just said, others talked about it. You did it. So I want to thank you on behalf of the people of Israel. And I also want to um, uh, I look forward to our discussions on both challenges and opportunities. If I had to say what is our greatest challenge in the Middle East to both our countries, to our Arab neighbors. Many people are celebrating this peace initiative However, we have to understand that we are living in the last days. And the Bible makes it very clear that there will be an Antichrist that will bring forth a false peace and security. He will declare himself as God Almighty. Folks, there's so much we have to understand in these last days. But one thing is for certain. The day of the Lord is at hand. The signs of the times continue to showcase itself as we come closer and closer to that day. Are you saved? Folks, if you're not saved, you must fully submit and surrender your entire life to Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only truth. And Jesus is the only life. No man comes to the Father but through Jesus. And if the Word of God says it, that settles it because it is the Word of God. Give your life to Jesus. Say, Jesus, save me. Make me born again. Write my name in your book. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Renew a right spirit within me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Break off the chains of bondage and torment. Deliver me. Save me. I surrender all. In Jesus' name, amen.